the recording this last Sunday did not work out, so this is a second attempt at recording the sermon. A friend of mine, Steve Sager, tells a story of his childhood when he was 12. When he was 12, he uh, came home from worship and he'd been taught to pray growing up and he came home from worship and he looked at his dresser and as he was preparing to do his uh, nightly prayers, evening prayers, he looked at the, all of his very important stuff. 12 year old boy he has all this, the stuff that is important to him. He looks at all this stuff and he thinks, eh. Goes down the hall. Grabs a candle out of the closet. Puts that right in the middle of it all and thinks, okay, that's good. Does his nightly prayers and goes to bed. He does this the next night and the night after that it becomes something he does on a regular basis. Well, every time he lights the candles, I mean, he kind of realizes he's lighting it next to all this stuff and, I mean, probably needs to get some of it out of the way. Nothing else for safety reasons. So, starts to clear out this space. What happens over time is that uh, appreciates this space, the candle burns down. It happens, right? Candles burns down. Candle burns down and he has to go get a new candle and this time he grabs two. Comes back and puts them on his dresser. And he's been using this space to, to pray. And what he realizes is he needs to kind of clear it off a bit more because some of this stuff, it just, it doesn't belong. So he starts to clear it off a little bit more. And what, the way he can tell the story now looking back, what he sees uh, looking back on this as an adult is that he was not just clearing off the clutter so that he could have a safe place to burn these candles, but that he was sort of building an altar, so to speak. He was creating this space pushing away the clutter, what doesn't belong, to create a place where in his prayers he could invite God to become part of his life. But to do this, to create this space, he had to push back all the stuff that was encroaching. Last week we began Advent, this time of preparing for Christmas. And we began by focusing on the way that we hear the story of Jesus. That's the central thing we do during Advent. We're focusing on the coming of Jesus in worship, is where we, we focus. And we're going to turn in the coming weeks to how do we give of ourselves, give well? How do we love all? This is the pivot week. This is the week where we have to talk about what we need to do to be able to get that. This is the week we talk about less. Less of what clutters and what pushes in. Less of what keeps us busy and overwhelmed. Less of what burns up our resources, our time, our money, our attention. Creating space, just like young Steve years ago. Space which then he can offer and we can offer. God. We live in a time which tries to fill up space as rapidly as possible. Trying, there's always this, an ad trying to sell us more, 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 more. If, you, if you'll just right, stay thirsty, my friend, right? That, that, beer, that beer ad. It's not about drinking more dosaki. 
It's about buying into this, uh, if you do more of this, you'll have a life that is uh, more interesting. Or every kiss begins with K, you know, with the, the, this idea that if you buy this, this jewelry, you'll have a life that's more full uh, of this type of relationship. Or, or, or we have these phones, just by their very nature, they're always demanding more of our attention and pinging and trying to get us to pay attention. And this constant search for more is offering this, this false sense of more, that this somehow this more will be satisfying, that this more is what we need. It's exhausting. It takes up our money and our time and our attention and our energy, and it pushes us to the brink, because when we're always so stressed about all, keeping track of all of this more and all this stuff, we start losing our flexibility our ability to roll with things, our ability to adapt and innovate and to change. And um, when we're trying to keep, keep track of this more, as often happens at the holidays, we get really, really stressed. And if you've had those holiday events where someone is just like on edge and stressed and ah, it has to go perfect or else, you know, they've, that, that's an issue. Right? We've bought into the more of our culture and we need to focus a bit on pushing back and, and creating a space a little bit less uh, of what, what is stressing us out. Jesus warns of this, that um, our life is not in our distractions and that uh, who by worrying can add an hour to their lives. Look at the grass of the fields and the birds of the air. It's in Matthew 6, he says this, that, that they, they are beautiful and cared for. And you are, aren't you more precious even than that to our Heavenly Father? So do, do not worry about all that more. Create, create the space to enjoy what, what is. Paul further uh, commends to us to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And I think this is, uh, this is what part of what Paul is getting at. To be conformed to this world is, is to buy into the, the hurry and the busyness. To be transformed is to create space for coffee with friends. To be conformed to this world is to do as much shopping as we can. To be transformed is to do less shopping and more play, more enjoying with each other. To be conformed to this world is to worry that everything is perfect. To be transformed by the renewing of our mind is to enjoy the time we have together, whether it is perfect or not. Less of the shopping and less of the worry, less of the hurry, more coffee together, more play together, more time together. Ultimately, Advent is about receiving the gift of a child and to create the space to receive that gift is essential. If we don't get that right, whether we gave a good gift to uncle so-and-so isn't, isn't gonna matter. It's secondary to receiving the gift and celebrating that gift well. Now, this is a discussion every family has to, has to make amongst itself. I can't tell you what your family needs to do. Every family will figure this out by, by themselves. And, and this is uh, something that, it's individual discussions that it's what it's going to take. And it, it's one step at a time. You don't go from cluttered and, and full to, to having a space to, to focus in, in one step. It takes time. And notice this clutter. I'm not, this is not a comment about housekeeping. This is about the clutter of our soul, right? It, it, so it, it is something that we all have to decide. Is it if we're going to spend less, do we want to do one less gift all the way around so we can spend more time appreciating each other? Do we, do we say we're not going to add the stress of debt to this Christmas? We're going to have a debt-free Christmas. Just no debt. Just we'll get what we can get, and then we will enjoy each other's company. Right? Uh, less busyness. Do we push back on the overcommitment so that we can spend time together doing things like the Advent wreath together as a family or or focusing on what would we do on Christmas Day to enjoy the gift of each other and what do we need to push back on to create that, that time. This is something that uh, will have to be done step by step. You, take, you discuss it as a family, you try it, and then you, you review and say, ah, oh, well, do we do more of that next year or not? This is the hardest week of Advent because uh, it's, the, it's the pivot week, it's the week of less. 
This is not the week that's for worship. It's not the week that's for how to give a gift well. It's not for loving all. It's about less of everything else. Because if I told you right now to do more, you'd look at your calendar and you'd want to kill me. The only way we can make time and energy and attention and space and, and resources available for the more of, of God is to have the less uh, of the things that impinge and intrude. This is a week that is about not. It's about pushing back to create this type of space to spend less so that we might spend our time well focusing on, on Jesus, the first gift that is given. Amen.